This is a piece of machine code, and this is an assembly instruction. It calculates the sum of values stored in registers RAX and RBX. So, what is a register? How this code works and how to analyze it? This video doesn't cover a very little detail, but my goal is to make you able to start reverse engineering as fast as possible. To give you enough information so you can start practicing reverse engineering and finding out about more stuff on your own. Of course, I'm not leaving you and I will discuss more details in the future videos. Also, there is a special announcement I want to make. I've started working on my own reverse engineering course. More details on this at the end of the video. My name is Slav Maskvin, you are watching past CyberSec, and let's go learn some reverse engineering. Knowing the basics behind CPU working process is essential for reverse engineering. If you already know this stuff, the chapters are below the video. Here is a CPU. It's the brain of any computer. The faster the brain, the faster the computer works. So, let's say you have a program written in any programming language, for example C. In order to execute it, you have to compile its code into machine code. So, this becomes this. Machine code isn't designed to be consumed by people, but by CPUs, hence the name. Then, the machine code is loaded into RAM. RAM is the memory of the CPU. It's like a room. The more room, the more thoughts CPU can have. Loading the code into the memory is an important step, because CPU can work only with data and code loaded in memory. It doesn't have direct access to anything stored on disk. The CPU reads the machine code, decodes it into instructions, and executes them one instruction at a time. So, while machine code looks like this, this is an example of instruction sequence you get when decoding a piece of machine code. But what about registers? Registers are simply memory cells that reside inside the CPU itself. They are super fast to access much faster than RAM. That's why the CPU likes working with the registers even more than with RAM. The downside is that the number is limited and they can hold only a little bit of data. For example, the common size of a register is only 64 bit, which is 1 billion times less than a typical 8GB RAM stick. So, this machine code we are talking about is stored in files on the file system, just to avoid wasting time on compilation every time you want to run a program. And reverse engineering is basically a process of analyzing executable files and their machine code to understand how a piece of software works. Reverse engineers load these executable files into special tools called disassemblers and debuggers. These tools translate machine code into human-readable form of CPU instructions. And armed with the knowledge of how CPU instructions work, a reverse engineer can uh, reconstruct software logic one step at a time. But enough talking. Let's load one of those files in a special tool called a debugger. Mm -hmm. Debugger starts our program, but then immediately stops the execution. This allows us to look inside the brains of the CPU, examine how it works and executes code, one instruction at a time. This part of the debugger window shows us the application code. Some of the instructions shown here might be familiar to you. For example, this instruction subtracts 78 bytes from ESP register. And next to the instruction you can see some bytes. This is the machine code we talked about for so long. And text rep representation of the instruction is in fact a decoded machine code. 
the leftmost row is an address of an instruction. You see, you can think of RAM as a checkered notebook. One cell in this notebook contains a value of one byte. To read and write in the cell, CPU needs to know its location in the notebook. This location is called an address, and each memory cell has one. Modern CPUs and operating system have implemented a special trick to manage multiple processes with a limited amount of RAM, called virtual address space. I might cover it in the future videos, but right now you already have a lot of it to digest, so let's move on. If I start program execution, you might notice this arrow. It points at the instruction to be executed next. But how our debugger knows which instruction it is? Meet the register window. It holds the values of all registers available for our debuggy to use. See that EAP register? Letters IP in its name stand for instruction pointer. So now it's clear that this blue arrow points at whatever address is stored in EAP. See? Points. That's why it's called instruction pointer. And this window shows us the contents of Protoss memory, a so-called hex dump. In this window, you can see all of the Protoss memory on given address in hexadecimal format. Also, you can add memory here. So, if I were to open our program code in hexdump, I can edit our code. Let's say I want edit instruction push ebp. So, for example, I can modify it from byte 55 to 90. And as you can see, this instruction just changed to knob or no operation. The next window shows us a special part of process memory called the stack. This piece of memory can be operated on like any other memory segment, but usually it's used for another purpose. The stack works like a stack of books. You can either put a book on top of the stack or take it also from top of the stack. So, when dealing with bytes instead of books, you can put data on the stack with the instruction push and take data from the stack with the instruction pop. Let me show you. You see, here we have instruction push ebp. And here we have a value of ebp register. So, for simplicity, let me change the value of ebp register to this. And now I am executing this push instruction. And as you can see, this value of 8 A's was placed on top of the stack. This mechanism is vital for passing arguments to the function. But more on this in the future videos. Also, you should remember that the stack is used for storing local variables of the functions. So, now when we know how the CPU and code execution work, we can change something in our program and see what happens. So, let me start it first and make you familiar with our program Better Minesweeper for Windows. So, this is a Minesweeper, but it's been modified. Let me show you. As you can see, this game is uh, quite impossible to win. But can we win it with the power of debugging? Let's see. You see, I've been preparing for this video, so I analyzed this program for a bit. It has some interesting functions. And one function is called every time the game is finished. So let me set a breakpoint to this function. So the program would stop its execution every time it tries to execute this function. And let me do something in our game. As you can see, the program execution is now paused. And on the stack we can see an argument which was passed to the function. 
in our case it's zero but could it be that zero means we lost the game but one means that we won the game let's check it out so let me change value of our argument to one and continue execution of our mind super game and yes as we see Minesweeper congratulates us with a glorious victory. So let's type our name here. And as you can see, we are now holding a record of the best Minesweepers in the world. Let me show you another little trick, which may show you how data is stored inside the program. So instead of Minesweeper, I launched a notepad. Let's type something in here. And let's try to find the text I just typed in the notepad memory. So let me copy this string go to memory map find pattern and paste it in here as unicode string and here we can see that we found our string on three locations so let's go to the first one as you can see our string opens up in hex dump so let me change the last letter and let's see what happens just as expected instead of confident statement that youtube channel past cybersec is the best of the world we see that the one who wrote this is quite unsure about this thing and this trick is just unacceptable but let me show you some more i'll continue to type and look closely at hex window what i'm typing immediately shows in the process memory but what happens if i'll type a bit more see our text just disappeared and this place in memory holds just some garbage so why this happens consider this my tiny homework for you and now back to the video and to my special announcement my reverse engineering course is gonna be solely practice oriented and you'll get not only the videos but also homework assignments and as I think on the cake, there are going to be weekly Zoom calls where we will discuss theory and homework in greater details and work on any obstacles you encounter with. The course is going to be about 10 lessons long and by the end of it, you are going to be able to find and exploit your first vulnerabilities. I want to make the course interesting, engaging and helpful. I want your eyes to lift up that's why I need your help. You can give me a huge favor by following the link below and filling out simple form and providing your feedback. Thanks in advance, you guys. And that's it. If you found something confusing or hard to understand, please leave a comment below. Like this video if you want more content like this. And as always, happy hacking, you guys.